Scotland. Andy Hertzfeld is still here, the, the uh, man who uh, worked on the early days of the uh, Mac revolution and, uh, and is now uh, a software wizard at Easel. That's right. How, tell me about how Easel, how did that get started? Uh, well, we, uh, in early 1998, uh, we discovered free software, and uh, we were pretty frustrated about the computer industry not serving the needs of the ordinary users over right. the last decade or so, because the users don't have freedom of choice. Right. And free software gives the promise to put the user back at the center of the industry. So you're a fan of, of open vendor. source, then? That's right. Interesting. And would you, if you could go back 20 years, would you have done the... What you did, open source? Um, well, open, the open source movement didn't exist really 20 right. years ago, in, in, except in very nascent stages. Richard Stallman, uh, he was the there. hero of the he open source He was hacking movement. away. Well, really, he started the GNU project uh, in 1983. Oh, interesting. So 17, so it, 17 or 18 years ago. Right there, yeah. When you say we, who is, who's we? Who, who's working uh, with Well, the, the two other co-founders of Easel, one's myself, one's Bart DeCram, and one's Mike Boych. Now, Mike and Boych, but, of course, goes back to the... Yeah, my, there, Mike too. Boych was the guy who coined the term evangelist. He was the very the first. first evangelist in the computer industry. Oh, that's great. So you got together with, uh, with these guys and got interested in open source, which I guess leads you to Linux. Well, actually, I got an interest in open source about two years before Easel started. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I just began my odyssey exploring it. And after exploring it, we saw that it was up to snuff in almost every dimension. It was more robust. Uh, of course, the free price is terrific for users. Right. But the one aspect where it was lacking was usability. Uh, it was kind of made by technical people for technical people. And it just wasn't easy enough to use for a mainstream audience. It's and interesting so, you say that, because it was in the same state, really, that the computing world was before Mac. That's right. Where it was aimed at a technical user, and that's what Mac did, is it made it accessible for the rest of us. So is that the goal of Easel? Sure. So once I realized how good free software would be for people, and that what it was lacking was exactly what I've devoted my career to right. improving, I uh, sort of uh, took that as a, as, a, as a call to action. So Easel's the company. The program's called Nautilus. We've got it running now. And I've got to apologize, because yeah. we messed up the aspect ratio of a screen. This would normally be square, and so it looks a little elongated. Yep. But you'll get an idea of what it can do. Absolutely. And you know what it just means? Go to the website, because you can download this and try it. What, what's state are you in right now? You're still uh, beta. We're about one week from our 1.0 version. Oh, really? But uh, what I should mention is Nautilus is a key part of the GNOME environment. So you're so in really the GNOME what, desktop. That's right. We draw the GNOME desktop. Nautilus is, is the program that will draw it at, with GNOME 1.4, which will be coming out in April. So the new GNOME is relying on Nautilus. That's correct. Very interesting. Okay. Now, so Nautilus is not a window manager. Or is it? What is it? Uh, well, it's a little confusing. No, I call it a graphical shell. Mm -hmm. uh, you can think of it as a file manager on steroids. Show us a little it. bit. Do a little okay. Mike Boyce <laughs> evangelism here for us. Okay. Uh, well, for, for one thing... Uh, can you get a shot of it, Greg? I, I want to make sure Greg can see it. because we want. Yeah, well, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, how big should the icons be uh, in a file manager? Nautilus supports zooming, oh, so you I can you that. can you can step back and see thousands of things at once. But as you as you get closer, you see you see more detail. It's a little thing, uh, but that makes a big difference. Oh yeah. And not only do you see more detail, but you see yeah you see the contents of the files. One of our themes is to let the content of the files shine through the icons. So That's we use really images cool. to represent themselves. Notice text files yeah. have the actual text in them. The text is right there. Yeah, and icons. Every icon is individually resizable, so I can just say, stretch icon here, and if this document is particularly important to me, I can make it really large. Oh, Andy, And so you can read beautiful. it just in the icons. That by itself, that is beautiful. Sure, and then when you activate a file on a, on a traditional, I just clicked, clicked on that file, uh, and in a traditional system, it would bring up a separate program to view the contents right. of files. But That's Nautilus right. is based on a component model, so we can embed views. Notice that you're looking at the text file right inside of Nautilus. So, that, so the, you the, don't have to suffer through the complexity of the context switch of different applications. Now, now what you're missing in Linux is you don't have the component object model that you have in something like well, Windows. Well, we do, actually. Really one of the reasons we selected the GNOME platform to work on is it's got a terrific component framework, every really? bit as good as Microsoft Com. That's great. Now, ultimate, is the ultimate plan to make this be a, a consumer interface so that, consumer, that consumers can use this as a desktop operating system? Yes, sure, but we also want to make it great for the technical people and the hackers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, for that reason, we put a framework in Nautilus that you can see with this menu here. It's got user levels, so it will optimize itself for a beginning user, an intermediate user, or an advanced user. Keep your hands out of the shot, so I really <laughs> want everybody to see how great uh, this looks. So you just go to the menu and you choose it. Right That's there. right, and it's, the interface will simplify itself if you're a beginner, or give you access to, to the more complex features uh, as you learn more. One of the neat things about 
Linux desktops is they're very customizable. You're going to be oh yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. We have great ways to customize the look. We everything is fully themable. So I can select a different theme here. Uh, this is the the default theme, uh, but I'll select uh, this one uh, uh, called Crux Eggplant. And now all, all of the icons change. We're we're the first program I think to take the theming down into the icons. Not only that, you can individually customize every every place. I'll show you. I'll show you show you how that works. We have a. Um, a little browser here where you can browse for content. So when I bring that up, there's all these different patterns. I can yep. just drag and drop a pattern. Oh, it's beautiful. Or, or drag and drop, say, this Andy, one here. Andy, you're giving this away, though. Uh, right? That's correct. Well, how are you going to ever make any money, Andy? Well, what we're going to do is offer automated services that also help make the computer easy to use. What I so call there's the, a business model. Oh, absolutely. We, we'd be irresponsible to uh, <laughs> take money from investors unless right. we thought we can uh, flourish. And so what we're going to do is everyone is so frustrated at just keeping your computer operating. And when you install new software, making sure that software oh, is compatible with the software already on it. It's, it's, wor it's worse on Linux, but and, it's terrible on Windows. And, and uh, the Internet gives us uh, uh, the raw capability to solve that for people finally after, after so 20 kind of or so years. Automatic customization updates. Fixes. That's right. And e our system will continue to work e all by itself. Easel is offering a software catalog that's customized to the software that you already have on your machine. That you just do a one-click install, and we guarantee it'll work perfectly What's with the, the best software way already one? on the machine. What's the best way to get 1.0? Should I get GNOME 1.4 when it yeah, comes out? Yeah, yeah. Probably for most users, it'll be, it's worthwhile to wait for GNOME 1.4, which that's should next be month. well. That should be out by early April. early April. Our 1.0 precedes GNOME. 1.4, and then we left a month to integrate it well. But now I can go to Easel's testing. website and download 1. Point or 1.0 when it comes out this, later this week or uh, earlier beta versions that's now. Right, that's right? right. Or if you're a programmer, you can uh, look at the source code. Just go to cvs.gnome.org and you can see the changes that I make that's tomorrow. Right. Just write in the change. What's the website? Easel.com? Uh, yeah, www.easel.com. E A Z E L. That's correct. Because it makes it easy to use Linux. Andy? Such a pleasure to have you on the show. My pleasure. We, we thank you for the work you've done. And it, it looks like the work you're doing now takes it to the next level. Yeah, we're, really we're excited, excited about it. That's really wonderful. Andy Hertzfeld, co-founder and software wizard at Easel. And, of course, a Macintosh wizard. Uh, you want to find out more about Easel or try out Nautilus for yourself, be sure to check out their web page, as I mentioned, at uh, www.easel.com. And to find out more about the evolution of graphical user interfaces, check the article Andy wrote for us. Talks about uh, past, present, and future at thescreensavers.com.